discussing the module 7 of the organic chemical technology course and in module 7 we are discussing about the various petrochemicals which are being manufactured. Already we have taken 7 lectures on the petrochemicals and that was this introduction to the petrochemical, then the it was the naphtha cracking, recovery of the FCC gases. Then we discuss about the synthesis gas, ethylene and the propylene derivative. Now today we will be discussing about a very important topic. Already we discussed in the last lecture about the aromatic production. So we will be discussing about the aromatics product profile, ethyl benzene, styrene, cumin, phenol, bisphenol, aniline and thalic anhydride also. Uh, the coverage of the lecture will be introduction, product profile of aromatics, benzene, thylene, xylene, world aromatic petrochemical scenario, ethyl benzene and styrene manufacture uh, because for the manufacture of styrene we need the ethyl benzene and for the ethyl benzene we need the ethylene and the benzene and so that is the styrene that is the major outlet is for the manufacture of the resins and synthetic rubber. Another important product of uh, uh, BTX is the phthalic anhydride, cumin and the phenol, bisphenol, aniline. So, aromatics as we discuss in case of if it is the ethylene is the king of the chemicals, so aromatics is the backbone of organic chemical industry. And before coming of the cracker, there was the uh, aromatics in some other form and one of the root was the your coal open gas, coke open gas and already we discussed about the coal chemicals and the um, aromatics with different type of the aromatics which we are getting and even the you see the now we are talking about the arthrozyline for thalic and I'd, earlier it was the naphthalene root which was um, produced from the coke open plant. So, this is the how the importance of the aromatics have been big, but actually the ability of the aromatics that was more only after the coming of the catalytic reforming because you see the requirement of the um, arom, this uh, aromatics are huge and if you see the product profile of aromatic, the aromatic hydrocarbons especially benzene, trialene, xylene, BTX and ethyl benzene are major feed stock for the large number of the intermediates which are used in the production of the synthetic fiber. You take the case of the benzene, we are producing the cyclohexane, cyclohexane to caprolactum, similarly other um, uh, xylene to uh, your para xylene to TPA, purified terithelic acid or the GMT, similarly resins, various resins we are making, polystyrene resin, one of the important resins, synthetic rubber, synthetic rubber SPR and other uh, rubbers are there where we are using the huge amount of the uh, aromatics explosive TNT that was the one of the uh, very important uh, explosive during the uh, World War I, World War II and so TNT that played important role. So, pesticide, benzene hexachloride which called it the gamexene that was the um, first pesticide which was made from and the this benzene that was the benzene hexachloride after the DDT that was banned on the DDT. Detergent linear alkyl benzene, I already discussed about the linear alkyl benzene and the importance of the linear alkyl benzene where we are using the benzene for the alkylation process, dyes and intermediates where the huge amount of the aniline that is being used for the production of the dyes intermediate. Uh, these are the some of the derivatives of the um, benzene. So, from the benzene to cumin, cumin to phenol uh, and the acetone because they during the manufacture of phenol from the cumin we are also getting acetone as a byproduct. So, the phenol outlet is for adipic acid, aniline, bisphenol that is one of the very important product of the phenol which is going for the manufacture of the polycarbonate, then the caprolactum, phenolic resin pesticide, dyes, rubber chemicals, acetone, methyl isobutyl ketone, methyl methacrylate solvent, methyl isobutyl carbonyl.
cyclohexane that is the another derivative of the benzene that we are making and that is going for the manufacture of the caproelectrum nylon 6, nylon 66 ADPK acid, linear alkyl benzene that is going for the manufacture of the detergent, the biodegradable detergent and with the coming of the linear alkyl benzene there has been lot of the change in the um, your detergent industry because of the availability of the raw, raw material from the petrochemical route. Another derivative of the benzene that the malic analyte which is finding the wide application as lubricating additives, copolymer, agriculture chemicals, unsaturated polyester resin, 14 beta denol. These are the some of the product outlet for the malic analyte. Chlorobenzene, chlorobenzene was the uh, route for the aniline called the nitrobenzene that we are using. So, for making that the chlorobenzene, chlorination of the benzene that was the route. So, aniline, phenol, DDT, chloronitrobenzene and diphenyl. So, these are the some of the other important nitrobenzene. As I told you, the nitrobenzene that is being used for the manufacture of the aniline, disintermediate rubber chemicals, drugs, pharmaceutical, photographic chemicals, isocyanate, BSC that is uh, going um, that is being used as pesticide, ethyl benzene that is one of the very important derivative of the benzene which is going for the um, manufacture of the styrene. And so, the if you see the styrene that the polystyrene SPR, ABS, acclonitabutadine, styrene, polymer resin, SCN resin, acclonitabutadine, butadine, styrene, plastics protective. So, these are the some of the outlet for the, uh, then the tyrolin, tyrolin you see that they are having less usage of the tyrolin normally, but one of the major use is the manufacture of the benzoic acid, where the benzoic acid, tyrolin to benzoic acid and benzoic acid to caproelectrum that route is existing, but mostly what we are doing, we are going for the disproportionation of or the dealkylation of the tyrolin for getting the more valuated product benzene and the xylene. And this is the about the benzoic acid, then the phenol sodium benzoate that is the one of the very important preservative that we are making from the benzoic acid that is the sodium benzoate. Paracrystal solvents, these are the some of the outlet of course that the TNT which I told you that is the that is the very important product tri nitrotylene. Nitrotylene that is going for the tylene diisocyanate which is used for the polyurethane, rigid foam, flexible foam, surface coating. Tri nitrotylene as I told you that the one of the very important explosive because in uh, your uh, tylene that was available earlier from the cocoa plants also. So, but with the coming of the your this uh, catalytic reforming by more and more tyrolin is available. So, the explosive that may be the one of the very important derivatives uh, from the tyrolin which is being used, but although the lot of the uh, other explosive that has been also developed. So, the another important product of the um, ben, uh, this uh, aromatic group is the paragyalin. Paragyalin that is used for the manufacture of the polyester means the first um, paragyalin to DMT or the purified terithelic acid. So, the consumption of the paragyalin is estimated to have increased by approximately 4.7 percent in 2009. It is expected to average growth of 5.5 percent per year from 2009 to 2014 and 3.5 percent per year from 2014 to 2019. This is for us. Um, the market analysis of SRI. So, major use of the paragyalin as I discussed earlier also is in the manufacture of DN, DMT purified tetelic acid which is used in the manufacture of polished fibers, films and the polyethylene terethylate, polyethylene terethylate. So, this is the one of the major outlet for the paragyalin and so this is the integral part of the any DMT or the terephthalic acid plant where we are making the uh, polyester. Another important product which we are getting from the uh, 
catalytic reforming and um, when you are doing the paragelin manufacture the orthogelin that is a byproduct of the paragelin plant. And so, the now the orthogelin a major portion of the orthogelin that is going for the manufacture of thalic energy. So, the global production consumption of the orthogelin in 2009 were approximately 3.7 million tons, global capacity utilization was 66 percent. Orthogelin consumption is estimated to have increased slightly in 2009 and it is forecast to average growth of 3.2 percent per year from 2009 to 2014. So, this is the how the requirement of the orthogelin that is increasing and especially the for the manufacture of the thalic energy. So, these are the some of the major derivatives of the orthogelin that is the uh, thalic anhydride, the which is being used plasticizer one of the major use of the thalic anhydride is as plasticizer polyester resin alkyl resins dyes and pigments herbicides and the some other polyester polyols so these are the some of the so so for the meta is concerned one of the major derivative is the isothalic acid which is being used for the resins and related polyesters and then the plasticizers and other esters. Paragelin already we have discussed. And so, this is the as I told you the orthogelin plasticizer polyester resin, alkyl resin, dyes and pigments, herbicide, isotoic anhydride, polyester polyols and thalamide fungicide that is being used. Another actually the aromatic group is the naphthalene which was the earlier route for making of the thalic anhydride because this was obtained from from the cocoven plant and so the uh, major use of the naphthalene apart from the other uses insecticide naphthal and the mothballs and other uses that was the one of the important source of the thalic anhydride so before coming of the paragelin plant the most of the thalic energy that was being manufactured from the naphthalene road. So, these are the some of the surface active agent, synthetic staining agents, dyes, rubber, chemicals, solvents, agriculture uses. So, these are the some of the uses of the naphthalene. So, this is about the ward aromatic petrochemical scenario consumption figure of the benzene, tylene, and xylene and the changing scenario from 1992 to 2002 and 2007 to 2012 consumption growth that will be the in percentage 3.5 for benzene from 3.5 to 2.8, 1.9 to 2.4, ethyl benzene 4.2 to 2.7 and then this is tied in 3.9 to 2.7. Mixed xylenes, similarly mixed xylenes, xylene, para xylene, these are the some of the consumption figure uh, and the um, growth consumption growth during the period 1997 to 9, 2002 and 2002, 2007 and 2007, 2012. This is about the cumin, phenol, caprolactam, thalic and tylene diisocyanate. So, these are the some of the figures uh, from where you can get an idea of the how important is the Mm, aromatic compounds which are being used in some in some or other form in our mm, daily life. Uh, this is about the terephthalic acid and the dimethyl terephthalic. So, here also if you see the uh, consumption that is the growth rate and other earlier it was the terephthalic acid. Um, huge growth was there in case of terephthalic acid slightly that has gone down, but the requirement that is uh, increasing. Uh, this is the present capacity and production scenario of the benzene, tylene and xylene in India. So, this is the figure you can here also you can see the benzene production tylene is less and the more orthogelene the para is there because the para requirement that is going in the major portion around 70 percent more than 70 percent that is going to for the your terephthalic acid or the DMT. Uh, 
this is the install capacitance production capacitor, the major intermediate where the aromatics are involved. Acetone I have given because the we are getting as a byproduct from the cumin plant while making the phenol, aniline, benzene, nitrobenzene, ortho nitrotylene, ortho xylene, para xylene, phenol, and thalic anhydride. So, this is the install capacity of the um, various aromatic product we are getting, and this is the production figure. This is in the um, multiply by 1000 metric ton per annum. So, this is the about the install and production capacity of the major intermediate during 2009 to 10. Uh, this is the again install capacity and um, production of the various aromatics, major aromatics during the 2009 to 10 about the um, benzene, tylene, mixed xylene, ortho xylene and one of the another important product linear alkyl benzene in the phenol. So, these are the um, install capacity and this is the production figure and so the um, your utilize capacity utilization that may be. So, the ethyl, ethyl let us now discuss the some of the important derivatives of the benzene in more detail uh, in this series that will be the first that will be the ethyl benzene because ethyl benzene uh, you see the that is being used for the manufacture of the styrene and during the world war 1 and 2 that was the huge requirement of the styrene butadiene drug at that time. So, the even before coming of the petrochemical also the styrene that was as you see the in case of the uh, synthetic chemicals barely they started making styrene butadiene drug long back during the 60s. So, this is the importance of the ethyl benzene. So, ethyl benzene important derivatives of the benzene is fine application in the manufacture of styrene. Ethyl benzene with the demand share of more than 52 percent of the global benzene market where we are calculating the benzene with the ethylene and ethylene that was coming through the molasses route at that time in the earlier stages when the styrene manufacture that was started. Global production consumption of ethyl benzene in 2009 were uh, the around 26.3 million tons with the global capacity utilization of 75 percent. Styrene manufacture is the major consumer of the ethyl benzene. Uh, the what are the let us discuss now what are the routes for the making of the ethyl benzene. Ethyl benzene as you say the ethyl and benzene, so that is the made by the alkylation benzene and the ethylene and so again here also the same um, the catalyst about the HTSO4 to uh, hydrofluoric acid and now to the solid acid catalyst. So, these are the some of the development that has taken place. So, ethylene because we need the benzene and ethylene, so ethylene can be produced from either molasses root or the naphtha and the gas cracker. But with the increase in the FCC and because the more and more we are going to operate in the propylene mode. So, the there has been interest in the utilization of the FCC gases where the ethylene that may vary from 8 to 12 percent as source of ethylene and direct taking this ethylene for the alkylation the processes are now available. The conventional as I told you in case of the alkylation catalyst where the metal chlorides and the mineral acid, hydrofluoric acid and the H2SO4 catalyst used for alkylation now are the ZS5 for vapor phase, MCM22 for liquid phase. The catalyst used uh, already I discussed the ethyl benzene some of the technology which are available for the manufacture of ethyl benzene that is the catalytic distillation, then the OP EB1 process, mobile bezer EB max process. These are the three major process licenses for who are supplying the process for the ethyl benzene technology. Now, let us discuss the first process that is the catalytic distillation technology because this is one of the major 
development that has taken place in the, the process consists of the alkylation of the benzene with ethylene using a proprietary zeolite alkylation catalyst in a fixed bed catalytic distillation technology where the both the reaction and slight separation that is also taking place. This process is capable of handling a wide range in ethylene composition ranging from 10 to 100 percent because in case of the dilute steam of the ethylene that can be also used in this process. So, process step involved in case of the catalytic distillation technology is the um, first is the major unit is the catalytic distillation a steeper column where alkylation distillation takes place simultaneously with the final alkylation of the unreacted benzene and ethylene in the finishing reactor where the, um, the remaining benzene and ethylene alkylation that is uh, completed. Finally, the product steam is fractionated to separate ethyl benzene and the polyethyl benzene which is also formed during the process which is recycled to the trans allocation section and the, the flux oil. So, these are the some of the um, by product the polyethyl benzene and the flux oil. So, polyethyl benzene that is again converted um, that is being recycled, but the flux oil that is the waste we are getting from the ethyl benzene plant. Another process that is the Lumus EOP EB1 process. The process consists of liquid phase alkylation of benzene with ethylene using proprietary zeolite crystal in a fixed bed liquid phase reactor. So, this is the process by uh, Lumus and EOP. Unreacted ethylene and benzene vapor are condensed and fed to the finishing reactor, where the remaining alkylation is completed in the presence of the catalyst. So, here also the two reactors are there and so the finishing reactor that will complete the reaction. The product stream goes to the fractionating column where ethyl benzene is separated from the higher eth um, ethylated benzene and the heavy ends. The process steps involved are the as I told you the alk benzene and ethylene followed by separation of ethyl benzene and the polyethyl benzene which is a here also the byproduct and which is recycled back to trans alkylator reactor this is the finishing stage reactor to produce the eth additional ethyl benzene. Another process the liquid phase alkylation of benzene with ethylene using MCM 22 catalyst. This process alkylation of ethylene takes place in a liquid field alkylator reactor containing multiple fixed beds of mobile MCM 22 catalyst. During the here also the alkylation um, methyl benzene and a small quantity of polyethylene uh, polyethyl benzenes are formed which is converted to ethyl benzene using trans alkylation catalyst. So, this is the reaction which is taking place here the alkylation reaction. Now, this was the process for making of the because any styrene plant that will be the combination of ethyl benzene and then the styrene manufacture. So, this uh, in case of the ty styrene is a monomer used for the production of the polymer resins and rubber. The biggest consumer of the styrene monomer is the polystyrene. Other major derivatives are expanded polystyrene, styrene butadiene latex, styrene butadiene rubber, styrene block copolymer with the combination of the acclomite, clonitile, ABS, MBS, or the SBS. So, styrene is a um, global production and consumption of styrene was approximately 23 million tons with a global capacity utilization of 77 percent. Largest end use of the styrene is for the production of the polystyrene accounting for almost 60 percent of the total styrene. So, the process of uh, making styrene that is the Styrene is made by the catalytic dehydrogenation of the ethyl benzene. So, this is the process that we are using. The styrene plant consists of the two major units production of the 
ethylene either from molasses root or by naphthal natural gas cracking, production of ethyl benzene and then the dehydrogenation of the um, ethyl benzene to mystyrene. Uh, this is the lumos UP B1 process. In this process, first the alkylating engine with ethyl benzene followed by dehydrogenation of the ethyl benzene to form styrene. So, the polyethyl benzene which is formed during the alkylation is fed to the finishing reactor where the trans, trans alkylating uh, alkylation reaction is taking place. So, these are the some of the reaction that is taking place in case of the your styrene manufacture first it will be the ethyl benzene and some of the higher uh, this uh, your higher uh, polyethylene benzene that will be converted to again ethyl benzene. So, this is the dehydrogenation process that is taking place finally, ethyl benzene that was the during the manufacture of the ethyl benzene. So, ethyl benzene and recycle ethyl benzene are then dehydrogenated to styrene in the presence of steam at a pressure temperature of 550 to um, 568 degree centigrade under vacuum in a multi stage reactor. So, this is the uh, reaction that is taking place, but tylene is also formed in the process which is uh, recovered. Another process technology for manufacture of the styrene is the GT styrene. Styrene can be also directly recovered from the raw pyrolysis gasoline derived from the cracking of naphtha gas oils using the GT styrene process. Here what is happening in case of the as I told you during the um, manufacture of the aromatics along with the uh, other C8 means the para xylene, ortho xylene, ethyl benzene is also there. That ethyl benzene that has that is separated and that, that can be used for making of the styrene as I discussed I told you that the even the ethylene part that the ethylene which is available from the FCC gases that can be also used. So, here directly ethyl benzene because from the pyrolysis gasoline that can be separated. This is the another very uh, new development in case of the styrene technology that the innovative snow technology. This, this snow technology has been jointly developed by SNAM Procti and the Dow represents a technological and economical breakthrough in styrene production and uses benzene and uh, ethene as a raw material which is dehydrogenase in the same reactor for ethyl benzene because dehydrogenation of the ethene to ethylene that will be there and so the that will be used for the ethyl benzene um, manufacture. Lumus UP classic styrene process, the process ethyl benzene is categorically um, dehydrogenated in vapor phase to styrene in presence of the steam. The vapor phase reaction is carried out at high temperature under vacuum, high purity styrene is separated by fractionation. Now, this was about the ethyl benzene, the styrene which is one of the very important derivative um, because huge amount of the um, styrene that is going for the making of the polystyrene. Another important uh, product that has been in case of the benzene is the cumin to methanol, uh, cumin to phenol. So, cumin is made by alkylating benzene with the propylene and this was only actually this process why the cumin process came into the, um, that replaced the other process because the propylene that is available from the cracker plant, benzene is available from the aromatic plant. So, the raw material definitely that is much economical than the conventional raw material which was being used for making of the phenol that was the from the chlorobenzene root or the, some other roots are also there. So, the cumin is made by alkylating benzene with the propylene using zeolite catalyst. Following are the three major process available, catalytic distillation technology, liquid phase Qmax process, cumin by mobile bezel process. Uh, these are the some of the reactions that is taking place uh, in case of the uh, 
benzene, propylene and then you are getting the cumin. During the cumin manufacture, we are also getting and some which are um, some of the DIPV plus benzene to cumin and similarly the other side actions also take. But finally, we are getting the cumin. So, this is the process where the propylene and the benzene along with the fresh benzene that is going to the series of the reactor, um, the alkylation reactor, the trans alkylation reactor, depropionizer and then the benzene column, cumin column and the pi polyisopropyl benzene column. So, the and that is the finally here the cumin is separated and so that cumin will go for the making of the phenol. So, this was the uh, importance of the cumin and the now the um, phenol process making of the phenol it is all through the cumin process. So, ec while making of the cumin to phenol we are getting acetone one of the very important product as a by, by product. So, according to SRI consultant report 2010, global production and consumption of phenol were both around 8.0 million tons with global capacity utilization of 77 percent. Phenol consumption is expected to average growth of 5.1 percent per year from 2009 to 2014 and around 2.0 5 percent from 2014 to 19. Phenol is consumed mainly for the production. One of the major use of the although the phenol um, other uses also there were one of the major outlet that has been the manufacture of bisphenol which is being used for the making of the polycarbon. Uh, this is the cumin uh, phenol acetone plant of the hydrilia chemicals. This is also one of the um, large integrated petrochemical complex where they are making a large number of the petrochemicals and this is one of their very important product hydrilia chemicals. Phenol from cumin because as I told you they know the uh, all the phenols um, that has been replaced with the cumin process. So, cum phenol from cumin is a two step process with the first step being the production of the cumin hydroperoxide and the second step is the decomposition of the cumin hydroperoxide to phenol and acetone. So, this is the uh, which I told you that the acetone that is a byproduct and uh, during the manufacture of the phenol. So, temperature around 180 to 200 degrees centigrade, this is the pressure catalyst, metal catalyst, aluminum chloride, um, bentonites, silica aluminates. So, the various routes for the phenol other routes are as I told you the other routes are there and earlier the phenol was made by these uh, the third uh, the benzoic acid route or the chlorobenzene uh, route or the benzene sulfonation route. But now the most of the phenol the cumin process that is most attractive process because of the availability of the benzene from the um, catalytic reforming process and propylene from the cracker plant or from the dehydrogenation of the uh, propane. So, the, um, but these other routes are because benzoic acid again from the tyrolin to benzoic acid. So, the from the benzoic acid to phenol or from the chlorobenzene, but again in case of the chlorobenzene you are taking the benzene. So, that has to be chlorinated. So, involvement of the chlorine is there. So, because of all those reasons now the, it is the more preferred uh, route for the making of the phenol is the cumin route. Uh, another route that was the benzene sulfonation where again the um, handling of the sulfuric acid is there. Above all route the cumin route is the most economical and accounts for major phenol capacity. This is the reaction that is taking place in case of the uh, your phenol manufacture benzene propylene that is reacted and then you are getting the cumin hydroperoxide and from the cumin hydroperoxide um, we are finally getting the phenol and the acetone as a byproduct. So, this is the um, oxygen of the aqueous solution the cumin hydroperoxide is formed and from the cumin hydroperoxide phenol plus acetone that you are getting. So, this is the process that is 
being used for the manufacture of phenol. And this is the uh, your phenol from the cumin process. So that will go to the cumin will go to the oxidation tower, distillation tower, then the cleavage reactor catalyst you are adding here, crude acetone uh, column. Then the, it will go to the acetone column where the separation of the acetone acetone that will take place and form this crude acetone bottom product that will go to the phenol purification section where the phenol finally will be getting the phenol here. Here at the bottom again this will join to the phenol recovery section the then final distillation that will separate the phenol. So, this is the and you see the first will be the any phenol manufacturing in it that will have the cumin manufacturing part then the from the cumin to phenol recovery the means the finally you are getting the phenol here and the acetone that will be a byproduct of the cumin process. Now, let us discuss another very important product of the benzene that is the aniline which is being used in huge amount as a dye intermediate. So, aniline is used as a raw material for manufacture of large number of the chemicals like methyl diphenyl diisocyanate isocyanate that the MDI, rubber processing chemicals like antioxidant, stabilizers, antiozonant, agriculture chemicals include aniline based fungicide, insecticide, animal repellent, repellents and the different dyes and pigments especially uh, the fiber for the fiber then the pharmaceutical and the petrochemicals. But as I told you the large tonnage of the aniline derivatives are used uh, in the large variety of the dyes because now the um, a wide variety of the dyes depending upon the type of the uh, your textile that has been developed and so the aniline that has been providing the basic intermediate for making large sum of the dyes. A major portion of the aniline is used in the manufacture of rigid polyurethane also. Uh, this is the you see the major portion of the aniline that is going as the colorants and the manufacture of your um, dyes. So, rest of the other use the pharmaceuticals and other derivatives rubber chemicals, but major portion that is going as the coolant. These are the major uses of the aniline if you see the aniline to hydroquinone, estenolite then the diphenyl amine 2 mb2 diphenyl guadine diphenyl naphthyl amine beta naphthal that is one of the very important uh, intermediate which you are using in the dye industry so this is the for making of the azo dye although the there is ban on the use of the azo dye but these are the some of the uh, again the dimethyl amine is also going for the explo um, for your dye stuff and the explosive. So, these are this a large number of the products are there which are 2 mb2 that is going for the vulcanizing uh, and the acylator as activator for acylator that diphenyl uh, green adene. So, these are the some of the major outlet of the aniline and the even as you see the before coming of the um, aromatic plant the uh, root was for making the benzene aniline again it was through the cocoa plant, the aromatic form the cocoa plant. So, this is the production pattern of the aniline in the year 2010 and 11. This is in uh, in India, Gujarat Narmada Valley fertilizer GNFs, 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 FC that is one and Hindustan organic they are the major producer of the um, aniline GNVFC is the one of the large integrated petrochemical complex where they are making also the fertilizer and at the same time many of the petrochemicals. So, now they have two divisions one is the fertilizer division and there is the chemical division. 
So, aniline nitrobenzene is the important feedstock for the aniline and the major portion of the nitrobenzene nitrobenzene is used directly or indirectly as aniline in dye manufacture. Uh, this is the uh, reaction in the manufacture of aniline, ammonolysis of the chlorobenzene and is produced by ammonolysis of the chlorobenzene at 200 to 220 degree centigrade and the other vapor phase reduction of the nitrobenzene. So, this is the um, from the nitrobenzene route, this is from the chlorobenzene route. So, both the routes were earlier used for the making of and the steel that is being used for making of the aniline that the either through the chlorobenzene route or from the nitrobenzene route. Uh, this is the method for the aniline manufacture, nitrobenzene and hydrogen that is going to vaporizer from the vaporizer to uh, your and this is the catalytic reactor come distillation column where the um, reaction is taking place and then the finally the it is going for the after the separation of the catalyst it is going to separation of the aniline and the heavy end so this is the process that we are using for the making of the aniline from the nitrobenzene route Uh, so, now let us discuss about the bisphenol which is one of the important derivative I told you earlier also because be, uh, this is the major raw material for polycarbonate and major consumer of the phenol because the phenol and the phosgene that we are using here that is going for the making of the bisphenol. And so, the bisphenol and the now we are seeing the um, your uh, polycarbonate and the bisphenol is used for the man manufacture of the polycarbonate plastic and epoxy resin. It is also used in uh, as the inflame retarder concentrated polyester resin and polyacrylate, polyethermite and the polysulfone resins. One of the major outlet is for the bisphenol that is in the polycarbonate optical glasses and the many of the because um, that is having very high stain. So, that is being used the polycarbonate even the CD and other in the electronics um, industry also lot of the uses of the polycarbonate is there. So, technology the condensation of the phenol with the carbonyl component uh, compounds condensation of the phenol with the alkaline phenol condensation of the phenol with the ethylene and Estylenes condensation of the phenol with the alkylamine. These are the some of the routes available, but major and the actually the, um, the major process which we are using for the making of the base phenol is the either by ABS, ABS Lumus Global Sinopo technology or it with the Chiodo Corporation CTP circle. This is the some of the advantage low capital technology is suitable for optical grade polycarbonate from phenol and acetone because the um, huge application of the polycarbonate is for making optical glasses also. So, the another process for the manufacture of bisphenol, phenol and acetone the process can produce both grades of the polycarbonate and epoxy resins. Let us discuss the process technology in case of the bisphenol. Amongst the various process technology mentioned above, acid catalyzed condensation of the phenol and acetone is only commercial route commonly used for the various bisphenol manufacture. Uh, so, this is the phenol and acetone are mixed in the 3 percent 3 is to 1 molar ratio in 4 glass line stall reactors at 50 degree centigrade and one atmosphere pressure using an IDAS SCL catalyst and methyl mercaptan as promoter. The residence time is around 3 hours in each of these 4 reactors. Uh, this is the reaction that is taking place during the manufacture of the bisphenol. This is the process flow diagram for the um, manufacture of bisphenol from the phenol and acetone route. So, that is the phenol, acetone, methyl, mercaptan, hydrogen chloride that is going to the reactor. From the reactor, the products, the 
product steam is going for the separation of the SCL and other um, impurities which are present. So, that is the pure uh, water, phenol, then the after the phenol recovery, the heavier end that is going to the evaporation, crystallizer, purification, dye, and the finally you are getting the base phenol. So, this is the tech, uh, process technology for the manufacture of the base phenol. Now, let us discuss one of the another very important uh, aromatic compound which is finding large application in the paint industry. So, install capacity of thalic in India is approximately 2 lakhs 67,200 tons per annum. Major producer include the IG Petrochemicals Limited and Thermole Chemicals Limited. Naphthalene and orthogelins are the two major raw material for the manufacture of the thalic anhydride. Use of thalic anhydride 29 percent is plasticizer, 27 percent is dyes and pigment, 28 percent is the alkydagen and 16 others. This is again the thalic anhydride plant of the Ardelia chemicals. So, the process uh, earlier as I told you the naphthalene root that was the only the, root, um, the raw material that was naphthalene available from the cocoa plant. So, that was being used for the manufacture of thalic anhydride. So, here th thalic anhydride is produced by oxidation of the naphthalene in the gas phase using vanadium pentoxide catalase uh, supported on silica or the silicon carbide promoted with the various other metals oxides uh, like titanium oxide in either a fixed bed mul multiple reactors or the fluidized bed reactor. But now the all the um, uh, thalic anhydride we are making from the orthogelene roots. So, production of the thalic anhydride from orthogelene is similar to the naphthalene root, but uh, uh, here we are using the orthogelene and so the catalytic oxidation orthogelene is done either in the fixed bed catalytic reactor or having multi tube or the fluidized bed reactor. Now, the fluidized bed is more common in the presence of the vanadium pentoxide and the titanium oxide catalyst. So, this is the reaction that is taking place during the manufacture of thalic anhydride oxidation of the orthogelene uh, to the thalic anhydride. So, this was the about the various uh, petrochem aromatic petrochemicals that we are manufacturing their uses and application um, and the um, because you the aromatics are equally important and the next uh, module modules 8 will be discussing about the polymer industry because the polymer means the uh, plastic elastomer or the synthetic fiber in which these aromatics are also find wide application for the making of the various feed stock. So, the next uh, few lectures will be about 8 lectures are in module 7, where we will be discussing about the different type of the um, starting from the polyolefins to the PVC, then the polystyrene manufacture and then the manufacture of synthetic fiber, um, caprolactam and nylon 66 and then the uh, terephthalic acid and also we will be discussing in that part the viscose rayon and the acetate rayon which is also one of the important segment of the synthetic fiber industry. So, this will be the next 8 lecture will be in the on the polymer elastomer and synthetic fiber in the module 8 and after that the last module will be on the pesticide, pesticide and dyes and intermediate.